every time I have someone comes, he says, Oh, I can never do that. And like, well, you look back to where I started a year ago and it, a lot of it just takes practice and, you know, spending the time and experimenting. And it's, that's the thing I try to communicate actually with my tutorials that it's just makeup. It washes off, have fun. It shouldn't be stressful. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to All Beer Inside, Back to the Bubble episodes at this time. Uh, joining us today from Vancouver, British Columbia is Elena, also known as Eye of the Beer Holder 86. Hi, thank you for uh, having me. Thank you very much for taking time in your schedule to speak with us today about your Instagram passion and your passion of obviously craft beer and uh, the combination mm -hmm. of both. So we appreciate that. Uh, as we do on most episodes, we're going to share our virtual beer. Let my audience know what you're drinking. Sure. Um, so I actually, for, for the audience today, I paired a look with a beer. So you'll see this going up on my Instagram soon. So it matching between the two of them. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the Badlands and Superflux collaboration. Uh, it's called Fanta. So what they did with this particular collab is they took uh, the same wort base and then they separated it into two batches. One of them they fermented using their house yeast and then this one was used the with the thiolized yeast. So, and they both, they added a phantasm powder to both of them, which is, seems to be the cool thing to do right now is that. So it's really neat because this, this pack has a mix of uh, two cans of each and you get a chance to try side by side what happens when the same wort base has two different kinds of yeast. So, oh, so. Very, very cool. Uh, I went with a local super popular brewery. It's uh, Mosorum Bractorium. Uh, they are obviously the hype guys here in Montreal at the moment, and the beer is called Pandemonium. Uh, it's five different hops. I don't remember which ones. I don't, uh, it's super juicy, and I've had a bunch of these, and this is one of their most consistent beers for me. So uh, let awesome. us do a virtual uh, toast. Cheers. A toast. Let's see if I Cheers. can do this. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, nice and juicy. Mm. This is good stuff. What I'm getting, I have two cans of this left, one of each of them, and I'm actually going to have a side by side tasting of them with like next, see if I can discern the taste difference between the two of them. So it's yeah. really cool. I like that. Yeah, that that is one thing I miss about going to the breweries is like, hey, here's a, a flight and here's a variety of things I can do. But uh, I know here in Quebec everything is shut down. Uh, I think BC you're still allowed outdoor dining yeah. and. BC most of the year is beautiful so yeah indoor dining still too we are still allowed indoor it's uh just maximum six people a table oh. so yeah yeah the curses of living in this part of Canada sometimes yeah. uh <laughs> but it, it, things are things are I have faith that we will be reopening sooner rather than later after this wave uh that's just a feeling I got after yeah, first positive. first time I was like we're never opening again life is over let's just you know but Things are coming back slowly. It's it's cyclical, and uh, let's hope uh, we're we're reopen again in for St. Patrick's Day this year. We had to close two two years ago on St. Patrick's Day. Let's reopen two yeah, years. Yeah, I remember Patrick's that. Day. Friday the thirteenth was my last day in the office, and no one knew that it, that was the last day in the office. <laughs> yeah, it's been a wacky two years. I gotta say. Yeah, uh, but for sure. uh, because of this, I get to meet awesome, interesting people like yourself uh, and and other beer Instagrammers and such. So uh, you know. With uh, the negative does come some positives. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so uh, I, I like to ask this, uh, what's your beer story? What made you create the beer Instagram? What made you combine the beer labels with the, with your eye makeup? Like where, where does that idea entirely come from? Okay. Uh, so this was an idea that came up as a result of the lockdown, I guess, and having to find a hobby. And like uh, many people I know, I did drink, start drinking a bit more <laughs> during, uh, during the <laughs> lockdown, you know, you got to support your local breweries, you know, especially when it, uh, it came to the time where there was no indoor dining at all. And it was just takeout and everything like that. So um, it was a good opportunity to kind of start to expose myself a bit more to it. And then um, I had always kind of been in for the past couple of years, I've had a bit of an interest in craft beer. It's, um, I've gone to a couple of the festivals and everything here while we did have them still. Uh, I'd say my introduction to it was when uh, was Granville Island Brewing <laughs> back when it was still before it got, you know, bought out and yeah. became a macro. So, <laughs> it's, uh, but um, yeah, no, it was, uh, 
it was an interesting kind of crossover that happened because I've never really, up until I started this whole Instagram thing, I was never a huge buff for makeup. So it's, uh, it just was kind of like kismet that my interest in makeup and my interest in beer started to kind of come about at the same time. And I got the push from, um, uh, was somebody that I was seeing at the time who was heavily involved in the beer industry. And, you know, he had noticed my makeup and he was just like, Hey, you know, you should really, you know, think about doing something like this. And then I thought, well, I'm becoming more passionate with beer too. And, I'm actually finding there's a very big overlap in appreciation between the makeup community and the beer community for the artistry that goes into makeup and the beer labels and everything. So I figured let's try something to kind of differentiate myself a bit, you know, beyond, um, beyond doing beer reviews, which I still like to do, you know, a, Mm -hmm. a couple of them, but I wanted something that was, that was niche and, I've only ever seen two other accounts, um, one in Canada and one in the U S that do something similar, but they do full like theatrical (laughs) body paints, makeup and everything like that. So it's, uh, it was a decision to go with something niche, but still something that I'm still enjoying multiple aspects of Mm -hmm. it. So, and it's, uh, and and it also leaves a lot of room for growth. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. mm -hmm. I think it's super cool what you're doing. It it drew it drew my eyes like literally I of the beer holder. Yeah. It drew my <laughs> eyes to it right away. So I was like, oh, I gotta I gotta talk to you about this because this is so cool. So it's uh it's pretty awesome. And you mentioned you're a self taught aspiring uh, MUA. That's makeup artist. I'm assuming. Yes. Yeah. Have have that. This is you know obviously you can pass this by. I know Vancouver's starting to become quite the film scene. Have you looked into maybe doing makeup on film sets and stuff? No, because it's um it's like. I also have, uh, I'm also really big into baking on the side okay. as well. And I've had people ask me, oh, can you start doing this? You know, and start charging for it and everything. And it's the same type of thing feeling for me with makeup where that I don't want it to become a job, ah. you know, cause I, I have a very, I have a very good job. But it's not in the industry at all. I'm an accountant. <laughs> I'm actually an accountant. So it's okay. like, it, this oh, is so my you, uh, creative outlet. You're not able outlet. to stop right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this is my, this is my creative outlet. Right. And I don't mm-hmm. want it to become something where I'm focused on, you know, making a profit or something. Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, you know, maybe one day I'll get into, you know, actually doing people's makeup, yeah. but it's, uh, no, I've had no desire to monetize it really. So yeah. Uh, to me, uh, from, from what I'm hearing, it's your perfect creative release that you need it is. Uh, yeah. from, you know, like being an accountant is is super complicated, uh, especially we're, we're in this tax season right now. So I'm sure it's less than fun at the moment for you. Whereas this is like, I get to decompress and have a beer and do some awesome mm-hmm. eye makeup and uh, take my pictures from my Instagram and, and tell my story and combine everything like every one of your stories is either multiple layers of photos or a video with everything. So, so it's mm-hmm. quite, it's quite engaging, I find. And you're not even a professional account from what I'm seeing yet. You've already got a pretty good follower base. So I can imagine your, your growth from, you said roughly a year and a half, almost two years you've been doing this. It is going to grow over time. So. Yeah. Yeah. It has grown over the past year. I launched in uh, uh, summer 2020. So just when things started to kind of open up a little Mm -hmm. bit and it's like, I went from a hundred, I had like, I just broke a hundred followers at the beginning of last year. So it was, I figured out that I apparently didn't have to put an age restriction on my account. I thought I did. And I think that, and I think that that may have slowed me down a bit, but it's, uh, I'm happy with it. You know, like I said, it's not, you know, with the goal of monetizing it or becoming an influencer and getting free product or anything. That's not, that's not why I'm doing it. So yeah. Uh, do you recall like what brought you to craft beer? You mentioned earlier you were dating somebody in the industry. Uh, is t- he he or she brought you into that, or did you discover craft beer on your own? Uh, I started kind of tiptoeing into craft beer a couple of years ago. Um, it was um, it was it was very mild. It was a mild interest, and it was a uh, <laughs> one Christmas. Uh, it was a it was a gift from again, a boyfriend at the time, he got me one of those big, uh, like the beer advent calendars and mm-hmm. stuff, because at that time I had a very limited selection of, be- of craft beer that I liked. And I hated like IPAs and stouts and everything. I was basically just give me like, you know, the like, give me like the wheat beers, you know, that was about all I was having. He's like, it's okay. I'll take the ones that you won't drink. <laughs> you know, as I start to get to every other beer is going to him instead of me. I'm like, yeah. 
<laughs> maybe I should focus on this a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> and then going to craft beer festivals and realizing that if you have like when we had tokens and this this is the accountant in me and it's it's totally dorky, but I'm like for the cost of the token, I get a better return of return of value, return on investment if I have a higher alcohol beer like an IPA. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. so that started to expand my my horizon a bit more, and then uh, it all culminated with last year. Is like I I was seeing somebody that was in the in the brewing industry, and I like to take an interest in my partner's career and everything. So I started getting like dorky into the research about craft beer and everything, and then discovered this bustling community, you know that that kind of came along with it, and just how like limitless the options are really in craft beer. So my interest, I was slowly shallow. And then I started my, I did a deep dive, I'd say starting, you know, during the pandemic, this, this first summer of the pandemic. So. <laughs> so why I of the beer holder 86 uh, and not like, you know, Elena beer makeup or, or some sort of combination like that. Like I do like the concept of eyes in the beauty of the eyes in the beauty of the beholder. So it's the same yeah. concept. What is that kind of what drove you to create that it's, username? It's, Totally. It's a, t- it's yeah. totally tight in cheek. That's it. It's, you know, it's a, you get pretty quickly what it is, you know, it's just like, Oh, you put two and two together. Every person that I mentioned it to like, that is a perfect <laughs> name for, I mean, I wish I didn't have to have the 86. There is, yeah. there is somebody that has, I have the beer holder, like just plain and their account is basically inactive. And I've been like messaging them. I'm like, can I have that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, that that would kill me on the inside. Like somebody stole, you know, yeah, either no, all beer inside or my own personal. It's, it's hurting. It's hurting yeah. a little bit, but yeah. it's like I'm I'm trying. <laughs> oh, maybe message I Instagram keep... itself and be like, hey, this guy's this person's inactive. You should totally give me this. So yeah, yeah, yeah no kidding. But it's a, uh, you know, otherwise 86 is just like my birth year. So it's a, uh, yeah. But yeah, no, it was totally a tongue in cheek play in the world. You know, you know, it's like beauty is in the eye of the beholder or eye of the beer holder. Mm-hmm. really right so that's that's totally what uh what went with it yeah. is the, the play on words yeah. <laughs> i i noticed you have a video here where you're you supposed to be cleaning up your house and then counted your beer glasses yeah <laughs> uh, roughly how many do you have do you think i found more after i did oh, that so yeah. it was just like and I, of course i organized them alphabetically and then found afterwards another five or six I'm like oh and i have to like shuffle them over now to get them in i'm like this is what happens when you're ocd it's just like now i'm stuck <laughs> so i'd say probably of branded beer glasses like from bc breweries i've got i'd say probably over 40 yeah oh i'm i've got too yeah. many unfortunately i'm just looking at my uh storage shelf of glasses and then my bookcase which also has glasses in front of my books and then my fancy glasses that I got from beer festivals and uh somebody brought me home a real beer, beer sign from Germany which I can never use because it's beautiful and it's yeah. like oh it's great it's nice but I can never drink out of it why <laughs> would you why would I spend that kind of yeah. money but uh yeah and then behind yeah. me there's uh more there's a drinking horn and it's uh it gets to be up there it's it's it an addiction does. it's a scary addiction that that shouldn't happen yeah. so i know and i'm running out of space so it's like i've started getting uh stickers now because i have like my my habits evolved to the point where i have uh i'm sorry my hobby it's, it's a hobby not a habit <laughs> my hobby has gotten to the point where i have like a, i have a beer fridge you know and it's just like aha now i can put stickers on it so yeah. i'm getting, starting to get stickers from the breweries and actually from other beer instagrammers that make stickers and stuff and putting those on because it's like I'm running out of space for the glassware and it's uh it's pretty it's pretty it is it is definitely nice so it's uh but yeah it it takes up space at least I don't do growlers oh god yeah no (laughs) I'm uh I'm very thankful that a few of my local breweries uh went to canning during the pandemic and didn't stick with growlers because that's exactly what happened with me too it's just like I had for the ones that wouldn't do growlers or cans I was just like but I want to support you yeah Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, th- thankfully, I only have one growler left. It's from Magic Hat in the U.S. in Vermont when I was still able to go to America without it, the cat, that country, unfortunately, being on fire as well. Uh, and it's like, oh, we've close to the public. So I'm like, oh, so I can never return it. So I have to keep this growler. Um, now, I know neighbors to the east and west of Quebec, uh, beer delivery was an option. Was that also an option in British Columbia yeah. when? Yeah. Yeah, it is. A lot of the local breweries were doing uh, beer delivery. You can actually order liquor through like Uber Eats too, if you wanted to, through from the breweries. But it's uh, no, there was 
the only downside about that is that uh, I found with all these deliveries is that it's a minimum value or you're, mm. you're getting a four pack of something. And it's like my beer collection grew ex- exponentially at the beginning because I had to give four packs of everything. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, I, I'm, I, I'm so jealous of the rest of Canada living where I live. Now we do have convenience stores that deliver craft beer, but it's not, it's not the same thing to me. I don't feel like I'm supporting local directly doing that. Uh, and, and I know all the breweries I've spoken with over this pandemic are like, yeah, they have to fix this upcoming in June when we have our, our provincial election, this needs to get fixed. So yeah, I'm, no uh, yeah, I'm so jealous of the rest of Canada for being able to do that. Excuse me. Uh, would you, I think it would be a great idea. I'm sure you would as well on most Instagrammers and, and influencers we've spoken with. Now, I know Canada, we have wacky laws where you're in British Columbia, I'm in Quebec. We cannot get beers from each province. Technically, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah legally. Um, yeah. <laughs> would that be something that that you would like love to see in your province is getting beer from Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba? Yeah. Like, Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's uh, We have a, a, com- a couple of good companies out here, like Westcraft Beer, that... Mm-hmm is really good at importing in beers from outside of the province, a lot of American beers and whatnot that are hard or impossible to get essentially, but we pay an arm and a leg and a little bit of our kidney to get them. But (laughs) like, it's uh, even like, for example, like this, this, the collab beer, this in here, this Badland Superflex one, it was one that they would, for some reason they would ship it. We got it shipped from directly from the brewery here. There was a whole bunch of Instagrammers that got together on this but it still ended up being nine dollars a can basically yeah, yeah. when you think of the shipping cost and, and whatnot but that's probably why i focused so my account right now is just focused on bc beers because it's just so much easier for me to do looks based on bc beers because I, there's so many of them here you know but it's uh it would it would be nice we've had because but there's special import licenses and whatnot and I wish they made, I wish they would make it easier. You know, yeah. I definitely wish they would make it easier. <laughs> yeah. um, have you, are you at the point where you're introducing friends to craft beer? Like people who are, weren't craft beer drinkers before, do you kind of are getting them into craft beer? I'm, I'm, tr- I'm trying to, I am. I'm trying to, it's a generally most of my friends were already in to craft beer or it's like most of my close friends now are ones that I've met through the, like the beer Instagram or community, mm-hmm. which is, that's probably been the single best thing about the, whole pandemic is that by like doing my account and everything I've met some of the best people of my life and I have some of my best friends now are ones I've met like virtually through this and everything but I still have some I have some friends you know that we're trying to introduce to a big we like to um in the summer months when we could only be outside and actually most of our city started legalizing drinking outside we would go to like the parks. Everyone would bring, you know, a couple of bombers to share and we'd have like a socially distanced pass around the bottle, you know, and share. And that was the best way to get people to try little bits because we didn't, we couldn't go to mm-hmm. breweries for flights and whatnot. The hardest sell is my, is my, is my, my parents. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's the hardest sell. I try. I really try, but especially it's like the best way to do it. I find is to find things that are almost hybrids or crossovers and things to kind of ease them in or all the all the beers that are being aged in like wine barrels you know and you get the flavor of the wine mm-hmm. and you know it's tough my dad's pretty good he's he's getting better the first time I took him out for a flight afterwards he's like do other places do this yeah yeah, yeah. it was the cutest thing my mom no but it's um yeah no it's I find the best way to try to introduce somebody is to take something that you know they already like like if they're a wino though there are beers that are that are heavily influenced by wine you know Mm -hmm. so and it's that's kind of the easiest way to kind of introduce them to it and don't throw them a hot bomb (laughs) right away nothing alienates you faster than an ipa (laughs) that's uh that's what threw me off like i started to get my own father into craft beer about five four or five years ago and it would always be like a blonde a lager or something that tasted like Labatt 50. And I'm like, no. And I'm like, try this IPA. And now he's like, oh, get me the double dry hops, double IPA. That's 9% with all these hops. I'm like, uh, you're costing me nine bucks a beer now, old man. I love you, but you're getting expensive. <laughs> so. Yeah, before it was like the happy hour sleeve of whatever the, ha- the house lager was, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's pretty wild, yeah. Um, now, uh, just from the intro, when you spoke about the beer, 
Uh, it sounds like, are, are you looking to maybe do a certification as a, another kind of hobby in it, like a, either a beer judge or a Cicerone? Yeah, I've actually already started into the Cicerone program. I'm just about finished going through the beer savvy uh, kind of course, and then I'm going to do the, the beer server certification, certified beer server exam. I have that as part of the package uh, that I bought. Um, and then I am going to continue on and look at the, uh, the Cicerone, the actual, the rest of the stages mm-hmm. of it. Hopefully by the time I get to the point where I can do an exam, they'll have them here again. Yeah, Cause yeah. it's just like all these in-person exams, they're all down in the States. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's, that's the hard part. Um, but I've been making a very concerted effort to expand my knowledge about, about beer and also food and um, beer and food pairings, because I want to, I want to be able to focus a bit on that and really, I've always been a foodie. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's also a good way that I find is a good way to introduce my foodie friends to beer is to understand the pairings and say, hey, this is you don't have to have wine with that. You know, you can have beer Mm -hmm. like I just finished um, Genoa Morella Amato, who does. Uh, Yeah, I've had her. I've had beerology since it came out. Exactly. Yeah. So I just did a course with her. Actually, I did uh, mastering a food and beer pairing brought to you by Beerology. I was part of the initial cohort and it was nice to get weekly check-ins with Mirella. And we had like a really in-depth program about the nuances and, and whatnot. I was worried I'd be out of my depth because everyone else in the cohort works in the industry. And I was like, mm, I can't, but, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I've, I am absolutely interested in um, continuing with the education. I've been loading up on the books and everything. And it's, I was really into science and stuff in school mm-hmm. too. So, and I just, I love the science that's behind it and just the infinite possibilities of what yeah. can go into it. Maybe homebrew one day. I don't know. I don't do homebrewing now because it's a space issue. <laughs> I don't have space, but it's, uh, you know, possibly one day if I want to get to the point of really understanding the actual science mechanism and watch it happen. Yeah. yeah, no, absolutely interested in yeah. pursuing more certifications and, and whatnot. Well, I know Keegan from Four Origins here when we interviewed him. He's literally like, he's like, I took up the kitchen for half a day and then it, it pretty much sat in a closet fermenting. Uh, and then I just cleaned the, the rest of the house. Well, the roommates are like, what do you mean we're going to get free beer in four weeks? He's like, yeah, yeah, it's four, free beer in four weeks. But I got to clean up the mess first. So it's, it's not really, it's, it's more time than space, but space definitely helps from what, uh, yeah. having, having interviewed the homebrewer of homebrewers here in Montreal. I mean, he has a system and a half, so it's, uh, it's wild. Like you can either get like a Brazilla, which fits the size of a desk, or you could get a thing that where you'd have to literally lift stuff out using your ceiling rank cranks and stuff. It's crazy. Yeah. Like yeah, how far they this have, can go. Uh, they have like these set it and forget it ones now where you yeah. just like you have the kits that you just like put into it and press go. It's just like a freaking rotisserie chicken, right? Okay. I mean, it's just like you just press a button and that's it. But it's uh, I have a lot of beer to get through in general. <laughs> and I, I live by myself. It's just me and my cat. And she she's useless when it comes to drinking beer. So it's I know I'm telling you these cats, it's uh, a friend's dog. He would feed his dog beer and I'd be like, is that OK for the dog? And. I mean, the dog, it was still going. So I'm guessing beer's okay for dogs as long as it's not like in excess <laughs> where the dog's vomiting everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, dogs will do whatever for you. Cats are just like, would you die so I can eat you already? But that's that's cats, so. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Now you mentioned, um, you know, beer is, craft beer is still kind of a boys club. Do you find it is starting to become a little more inclusive for, well, especially a white boys club? Uh, is it starting to become a little more inclusive in, in BC? I know here in Quebec, not really Ontario. It's slow. How do you feel it is in BC when it's come to, uh, including, uh, people of color, women and, and other others that are guys like, yeah, me? yeah, no, BC has, um, I think actually the entire craft beer community had a bit of like an uproar over the past year about the, you know, the lack of diversity and, you know, the sexism that's in the industry as a whole, not just within like the social media and everything like sphere of things, but within the actual brewing world itself, you know, how many female brewers really are there, you know, front of house staff management, how do they get treated? And it's, uh, there's been a, a few breweries here that have made, you know, real concerted efforts, you know, to, you know, to do beers that are fundraisers for, you know, women's organizations or people or, you know, 
like people of color and mm -hmm. it's um it's we're shifting in the right direction I'd, I'd, I'd say we are and i'd say most places you know unless they want to you know completely alienate their customer base are doing a concerted effort and i've i've met a couple of really awesome women in the industry that that brew i've met like um Lundy from like Pink Boots Society. Uh, she's like one of the chapter leaders and I've met a couple of female brewers and it's uh, it's nice. I, and even watching the the Instagram community of like the beer Instagrammers, you're starting to see more and more female accounts that are starting to include more about like the the, the reviews and the technical side of thing. And, and that's probably part of the reason why I really want to learn more about it is because I want to be like, hey, I'm not just, you know, pretty face. There's I have like knowledge and substance behind it. It's a, uh, it's, we're, we're getting there. We are, we're getting there, but it's a, uh, it's, I think we've probably come a long way over the past like couple of years I and mean, women were the original brewers, right? Come on guys. So yep. it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Back in Mesopotamia. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. There's, there's yeah. room for improvement. There always is room for improvement, but I am lucky, especially out in Vancouver, that Vancouver in general is, pretty open about, you know, inclusive, inclusivity and diversity. And it's, it's, it's a big deal in, uh, in BC and especially Vancouver and the lower mainland. So. Yeah. I mean, as a whole, it's, it is time for a change. Like just the variety that craft beer is the variety of flavors you have. It should include the variety of life of, of everybody, whether you be, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, gay, trans, straight, black, white, whatever color you are to yeah. me, there is a beer for you if you enjoy beer, if you're not like gluten intolerant or anything like that, uh, or you just don't like beer, there's a beer out there for you. Therefore, you should be included in that industry. Yeah. So, uh, that, and this is coming from your prototypical beer bro looking guy. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's time, it's, it's drastic time for a change in this industry. Uh, it is unfortunately very slow, but it is happening. So it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, because uh, the right people are shaking the right trees. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and we're starting to hear, you know, people are at least some places. People are finally being held accountable for the bad, bad things they've done. So, yeah. uh, on a on a lighter note, uh, when it came to the Instagram in the future, if you could collab, either like you said, you're you're working on your sister on, so either collab making a beer or maybe doing a charity beer that also involves uh, your makeup industry stuff. Like, could you see yourself collabing with the brewery in the future with that? I would, yeah, no, I would, I would love to do that. I've had, um, I've been very lucky in that, especially over the past few months, I've had some breweries that have been reaching out to me to actively want to, to work with me a bit. Uh, in some cases it's, you know, Hey, we want to give you, you know, early access to this so that you can have a look ready for the release date of it or whatnot. Or I had a uh, one brewery that actually asked me to make up a custom like tutorial and makeup look for a festival that was happening and to work with the, the people there to teach them more about, about makeup and whatnot. So there's some seeds that have been planted to, you know, potentially work with, with some breweries. And I'm hoping that as I start to show a bit more that I do actually understand beer and not just makeup, like the technical side of it, that maybe one day I'd be able to help with like a brew day mm -hmm. or something, you know, I like, you know, the behind the scenes things. I mean, it's, you know, I've been lucky to count among my friends some people that are brewers or that are assistant brewers or work at the breweries. And and I I did a big, like, uh, I went to about 10 breweries on the island in July and reached out ahead of time. I said, hey, be nice. Can I get a tour if you're allowing it? Or can I talk to somebody about the brewery and the beer process? You know, because I would I would love to have some kind of input one day into some kind of, some kind of collab. <laughs> collab, yeah, yeah, yeah. collab beer for sure. Especially as I learn more about the brewing process and about, you know, adjuncts and flavorings and whatnot. So yeah, it would be nice. It, it would be, it would be nice. <laughs> Plus I'm sure like for yourself, when it comes to IPAs, I know for me, you know, I'm finding like a hop combination that has Vic Secret and Cashmere or something I always like. So I'm sure it's the same where you're like, you're starting to find that hop combination that you love with specific yeasts and specific malts. It's, it's getting that there. So it's like, oh, well, I like this. You guys have never made this, but I've been able to get it here. Let's do our own version of it. So. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a similar to what I did with, um, I did like an in-depth baking program over the uh, last summer where I learned about recipe development and iterations and prototyping and whatnot. So that's maybe why I would want to go into home brewing is so that I can actually have like a proof of concept, you know, to go to a brewery with and say, hey, I have seen no one's done this before. You know, it's 
would you be like open to talking about doing something like this? So plus it smells wonderful when you're brewing. So there's also that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have a brewery. Like uh, I live in um, actually in Port Coquitlam. So outside of Vancouver, mm-hmm. and there's like a brewery in downtown Poco, but it's also a barbecue restaurant. So I walk by and I can smell the brewing and the <sighs> barbecue and just like, Oh yes. Yeah. It's a good day today. <laughs> yeah. That was uh, man antler in uh, Bowmanville. It's like, okay, well the brewery's here, but right in front of us, this building we're in is a smokehouse. I'm like, Oh, you guys are awesome. I so wish I lived in Bowmanville, but <laughs> I don't, but, uh, but also like another rule here in Quebec versus I'm not sure about BC, uh, the brew house has to be closed off completely from the customers. Yeah, no, we have, um, no, cause we have, you yeah, know, we have breweries for sure where it's not completely closed off and you can just pull, there's like a little gate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Something you can, you could go through to it. Yeah. Uh, okay. I've never personally been to Vancouver before, unfortunately, or the BC area. Uh, I come out, we meet up, what are like five breweries that we're going to no matter what. And uh, I'm the type of person who will try any beer. What are those five breweries that you're going to be like, yeah, we have to go here. That's it. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I find that this particular brewery has a kind of a very divided fan base is people that are very devoted and love it. And there's those that just don't go, don't get it, I guess. And that's storm brewing. So Storm Brewing is like the OG, uh, like craft beer brewing. They've been established since 1994 <laughs> in Vancouver. And you like walk in there and you're like, this is somebody's like garage. I mean, it's like, you look at their Yelp reviews and this was one of the few growlers that I got because it literally, it says on it, it says sketchy as hell, but <laughs> good beer. <laughs> That's great. Their mascot is a rat. So yeah. it's, uh, Perfect. it's, <laughs> Definitely. But the level of creativity of these beers that you get at Storm is, is crazy. They had to start um, canning to survive because they actually, the way that they were licensed was that they had no tasting room. It was go in, give a donation and yeah. get to sample five beers. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. But I would say Storm just because there's so much history at Storm and their beer is, is so cool because they, they, they will try any kind of combination of beer. Um, then I would say, uh, I really like bakery brewing, which is in Port Moody. So at Port Moody, we have, we have Brewers Row that's, uh, that's along there and bakery brewing special of almost everything that they do. They have some kind of barrel aging that, that happens with it. They don't can anything. A lot of things you can get in bottles, but generally, if you like it, you better try it while it's there or get a bottle of it because it's you're likely not going to see it again. So bakery is one of my favorite places to go. Plus, they have ice cream there from uh, Rocky Point ice cream across this, across the way. You can get some really good ice cream beer floats, which, again, I'd say that's something that divides people. Some people like, you know, like a stout like I've, I had like a root beer stout once with like with with vanilla ice cream and like sold. Right? Yeah. <laughs> really really good um i really like cannery brewing in penticton is good um mainly because it's like i've had a chance to meet some of the people that are there and they're just really genuinely good people and they have their uh it's not sorcery it's science series yeah (laughs) that they have uh and they've had some really cool like experimental beers that come out of that so i really like them um, I am a big fan of I like Fraser Mills, which is also in Port Moody because it's not just beer. They also do, they make their own beer, they make their own cider, they make their own wine and mead. Wow. And you can get all of them on a flight. Oh yeah. Uh, I gotta get to BC <laughs> so badly. <laughs> and I, I have free room and board. I have a friend who lives on Vancouver Island. And he's like, yeah, dude, I, I have a house now. I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> so nice nice yeah. uh, and then i'd say my the last one that i would say you have to go to i would say probably patina because that's the one that's in my like my neck of the woods the one that also has the barbecue that's at it and it's my stomping grounds basically i mean yeah. i'm there every other day in the summertime because i can walk down there in 10 minutes so it's like 
It's not the best beer that I've had, but the hospitality, the atmosphere, it's co-owned by a bunch of cocoa whites. The barbecue is good. They don't ask, they're a living wage organization, so they don't ask for tips. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's, uh, Patina just has always been my go-to and has always made me happy. You know, not yeah. the absolute best beer that I've had in the world. Some of it is amazing. Like their juicy IPA is really good, but yeah, just because that one feels like home to me. So that would probably be the reason that I would pick them too. That uh, that definitely caught me for the first time ever uh, this past summer. Uh, I went to a brewery and I'm like, where's the tip option? And he's like, ha, we pay a living wage. I'm like, but where's the tip option? I don't understand. So <laughs> it's uh, it's something that I'm, I'm super happy to hear that some breweries are, are doing that now, where it's like these people, he, you can't live on minimum wage. It's that simple. No. Uh, no matter where you are, whether, you know, you're in Vancouver, which is, I believe, the most expensive place in Canada. Uh, and where I live in Montreal, we're catching up to Toronto mm-hmm. and Toronto is the second most expensive. So it's, uh, you know, this this twelve fifty an hour anymore just doesn't work for people. So, yeah, no, no, for sure. And it's a, you know, I mean, you end up paying a little bit more for for a flight or a meal or whatnot. But when you really think about how much you would tip usually versus that, I mean, it's really. It's not a huge deal, but for them to get paid an extra couple of bucks an hour, I have no problem with it. So. Yeah, uh, I, you know, what? there's a reason I drink craft beer. I have no problem paying for better products yeah. when I want it. So if you're, I get it, if you're, if you're hitting the local bar and you're, and you're having a 50 or a Molson X or something, yeah, they, they still need tips because mm-hmm. I know here in, in our province, uh, you get paid less than minimum wage because they break up the tips at the end of the day. I don't know if that's the rest of Canada or not, mm-hmm. but it's uh, it's insane that I don't understand how anybody can survive working in the service industry that's not at a high end restaurant. No, so no, it's no. it's crazy. And and as Canadians, we need to start doing better for our own people, whether whoever they are. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, OK. Uh, another lighter note thing. Uh, beer cations. When it's safe to travel again, obviously, because it's not exactly safe to travel right now. Um, I like to ask two, one where I still have to work. I have to go back to work at some point. So I only got like a week or two off. Uh, and then the Lotto Max, I don't have to work. I am a multimillionaire. I can travel the world for beer. What are What's that easy vacation, like normal vacation, then penultimate vacation? Okay, <clears throat> so the... I have to go back to work. So I'm only going to go away for like a week or two vacation. Um, uh, there's still a ton of spots on the BC ale trail that I, that I haven't had the opportunity to go to. Um, and a lot of them are on the Island actually, because it's, it's like, I'm ashamed to say it, but it's just like, I've lived in BC my entire life and I'm 35 years old and I've never been to Tofino. Oh. So, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, so it's like, I would uh, definitely spend some more time exploring the BC ale trail, especially what's on the Island. Um, because I've, uh, there's just so many breweries that are there that are easy and maybe more in the interior. I mean, I've done all the ones that are in Penticton. I've done a bunch in Kelowna, but there's still, even within my own backyard, there's still so many I haven't had a chance to do. And it doesn't want to be, you know, like go to the Island and have like the, the ocean and stuff right there while you're having some beer. So it's, I know we've got, we've got so many on the BC Ale Trail that I haven't tried yet. So I would, um, I had to focus somewhere. I would say I would go back to the island, but do the middle of the island and like the other coast because I just recently went up to like Nanaimo and Comox and and whatnot. But the other the other side, I haven't done that yet. So. And then if I had all the money and time in the world, it w- it'd have to be Europe for sure. Um, a bucket list item for me for a long time has been to go to Oktoberfest in Germany because my family's and uh, my dad's side of the family all lives in Germany. So, and it's like, and I haven't been back there since I was like in grade 12, basically. So I'd like to go there and, you know, I'd like to experience, experience like the October, it's like the big tents and everything like that. And, and, uh, that would be a lot of fun to do that. But if I, money's no option, I don't have to go back to work. Then I'd want to go to Belgium. You know, mm-hmm. I'd want to go try, you know, the Trappist beers, you know, go to the monasteries, you know, I mean, it's like, an, it's, it's like even all the other countries that are, that are around there that have, you know, lesser known beers, but it would Germany and Belgium for sure. I would spend some time there. Cause it's like, I just actually, one of the experiences that opened up my eyes really to beers was a Belgian restaurant in Vancouver. And they had like a listing of like 60 different Belgian beers 
you could have. And just like the couple that I had, I'm just like mind blown. (laughs) Right. So I would love to be able to like experience that firsthand in Belgium. And then just the culture of beer in Germany. I mean, it's it's bar none, right? I mean, it's like the cradle. It's like the cradle of life. So (laughs) So when it comes to the Instagram or or yourself personally, uh, what's kind of, what's kind of next for, for your beer adventuring and your, uh, your Instagram when it comes to it? Um, fine tuning my skills. <laughs> so it's, uh, with, with, with makeup. I mean, it's, uh, every time I have someone comes, he says, Oh, I can never do that. I'm like, well, you look back to where I started a year ago and it, a lot of it just takes practice and, you know, spending the time and experimenting. And it's, that's something I try to communicate actually with my tutorials that it's just makeup. It washes off, have fun. It shouldn't be stressful you know, and, and whatnot, it, it should be fun, but I want to spend some time, I guess, kind of refining my technique a bit. And then, as I mentioned, spend much more time studying more about beer. And um, eventually, hopefully, I would like to have another Instagram account where I have like beer and food pairings, uh, because I'm like I'm total dork about food in general. And now if I combine that with being a dork about beer, it'll be great. But it's <laughs> I have a, uh, I have a blog that I've started that I'm, I'm starting to work on hoping to get that off the ground. This year I've got, I have the beer holder.ca is mine. So it's, uh, <laughs> but it's uh, that I'm hoping to work on that this year and maybe get a YouTube channel in where I can do some makeup and beer reviews at the same time. Cause honestly, my makeup generally turns out better if I'm having a beer at the same time. So. <laughs> That's great. Just, just one, maybe two. <laughs> after a while, every, after a while, I'm like, ah, sure. It ends up all the way over here <laughs> where the hair starts. Try to like balance the wings out and you end up coloring the entire face, right? Yeah. Then you're going to look like Heath Ledger in uh, Dark Knight Rises. Just Yeah, with all... the little lipstick everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. I-, I love to hear that. Um, and, um, you know, when you, whenever you're ready to post stuff, we'll gladly share it uh, through the show. We'd love to. Awesome. So, uh, we look forward, uh, I personally look forward to, to more adventures and hopefully I can make it out to BC, meet yourself, make a beer man, uh, part of the Beardles, uh, beer me Canada, just all of you when I can get out to BC at some yeah, point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a, a lot of good people. It's, uh, a lot of, a lot of really good people out here for sure. And everyone's very welcoming and warm. And that's probably my biggest takeaway from the beer community is that everyone's been very welcoming and warm. So. Yeah, no, uh, doing this show the last two years, uh, Plus now I've thankfully yet to meet a real jerk uh, of a human being, uh, whether it be male or female, because women can be just as jerks as good as guys can be. Um, everybody in the craft beer community has been awesome. And I really hope that it continues this way. So, Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. Even it's like when I'm like cold calling people essentially to do collabs, no one really says no. So, <laughs> so. no, the only times we've gotten no is, uh, dude, there's a pandemic. I know, but I'm vaccinated. So come on. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, uh, but you know, like I said, things are coming back around slowly. Uh, we are in, unfortunately, another lockdown, but things, especially where, where I am, it's a lot worse than the rest of Canada, but it, it, things are going to reopen sooner rather than later, uh, at least from the tracking of the data. So, and science. So awesome. Uh, I really appreciate you speaking with me today and speaking about your passion about beer and, and your eye makeup and, and combining everything on your Instagram. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, I have no other questions for you. So let my audience know where they can find you online. Uh, so there's obviously my Instagram, which is says I the beer holder 86. Hopefully one day I'll be able to drop the 86. So I'll just keep knocking on that other guy's <laughs> Instagram account. Uh, hoping to launch my blog, I have the beer holder.ca. Uh, that one doesn't have to have the 86 because I got the the page, maybe something on, on Facebook, but it's, um, I'm receptive on, uh, on Instagram. I have the beer holder 86. I'm always up for collabs and meeting up with people or just chatting and want to start doing some more virtual tastings this year too. Cause last year, um, I was involved. There was a few of us that had gotten some brewers from the local brewers, breweries to come on, on board and we would have some beers together and chat. Um, but it's just the best way to get, uh, to get a hold of me. is just my, my Instagram. I have the beer holder 86. And as soon as my blog is live, I will be posting it <laughs> right now. It's in bare bones stage, okay. but it's there. I wanted to lock down the, the website. So <laughs> everything has a beginning at some point. So it's, yeah. uh, that's where it is. 
Awesome. So all that's going to be in our show notes. Uh, as for us, it's allbeerinside.com is the website at all beer inside on all social media. Uh, if you'd like to follow myself, it's at killer carpet diem uh, as well. In we're hoping to get t-shirts and, and merch up sooner rather than later. Uh, and if you like this episode, please subscribe, hit the notification bell and comment freely. Um, please be nice. It's always better for us. Uh, and nice to say at the end of all episodes, drink craft, not crap. <laughs>